going to use my headphones tonight so I don't have to hear the crap. <laughs> Can I wear the hat over that? <laughs> That's funny. Hat over the headphones. How about headphones over the hat? It actually works. Okay. What up? There's nobody here yet. There's nobody here yet. So simplified 3D and maker geeks. What's the issues? And are they deserving of their issues? Yes, they are. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I should take that filament out of that printer. And I think I will. some people in here. There's nobody here. If we had a controversy, we'd just draw people in. I don't know where I can go. Really, no one? Nobody at all? Coming in to see about Maker Geeks and Simplify 3D? Twitter. Come up and say I started streaming, doesn't it? Anybody there? Nobody here. Nobody here.
What the hell? Why are they freaking out? Should have restarted my computer. I think I'm gonna since no one's even here. Restart. All right, I should be live again. Let me see. You still there? <laughs> I gotta scratch my back really badly. Oh god. Itchy scratchy scratchy itchy. Right. <laughs> Alright. So that's working again. Pop out chat. Get rid of this window. We're back in business. I figured when I uh, shut my computer down and restarted it, it would just kill it, but it did not. Uh, 
33 degrees out. How very nice. So what's up, Michael? How is life? And back. One whole viewer. I don't know why it didn't... Uh, it's not a... Uh, I don't know. Not that I'm really popular, but I usually have a couple of people watching by now. It is kind of late, and it is Monday night. So what's your thoughts on Maker Geeks and Simplify 3D? Let's start with Maker Geeks. You still love their filament. Still kind of like Raptor. That whole thing is Raptor. The whole printer is Raptor. Maker Geeks, Raptor, filament. Cannot stand the company. Love the filament. Can't, I shouldn't even say love the filament. I actually got a couple of rolls that I disliked intensely. Um, their Dragon Silver was miserably terrible crap to print with. And uh, another one, both of which I sent to uh, um, Wiley, Mike. Gave him, he paid for the shipping and I just gave him to him and he had issues with him too. He got him to print by using a really large nozzle, but that's about all. They would clog constantly. I have a feeling they were varying in width. But I love the Raptor. And they, though neither one of those were Raptor. They were both their regular. Their Raptor filament has always been much better. Much better quality. But what a bad company. It is such a shame. I wish someone would buy them out. Because the guy running it has no idea how to run a business. And then they did the whole switcheroonie. Is that another site still up? Filament Geeks. Because they changed their name from Maker Geeks to Filament Geeks to try and get out of there. Their whole legal hassle, I have a feeling. Filament Geeks. Is, is it still up or did it get taken down right away too? <laughs> uh, it looks like it's still there. Oh, they changed their little icon and everything now. Keeping plastics out of the ocean. Fuck. Yeah, now they're just calling it Maker PLA and Raptor PLA. They've gotten rid of the whole Maker Geeks. And then they're trying to say filament geeks filament is used and loved by the University of Washington, University of Arkansas, Grand Canyon University, K State, NASA, <laughs> United States Navy, and Tesla. Yeah, right. Yeah, they need to go away. Someone needs to buy them out. They've got the same address. What a bunch of losers. Or a loser. I understand there's only like three people working there now. It makes me filament geek box. They're not even calling it a maker geek box. They're calling it the filament geek box. That's just slimy. So what do you guys think? We have four whole viewers, it says. Who's all in here? Yeah, that's just it. I wish they would jump shit. They're not jumping shit. They dropped their prices down. <laughs> wish you could actually get what you ordered, because Raptor for 14 bucks. Eleven bucks. 
for a spool. Raptors 18. I remember it was 35. It's up or over. Yeah, they completely, I mean, they sent out their letter and said, oh, we're going over, and they kept their logo and everything. Everyone started ranking on them. So they've changed their logo and everything now. I wish someone would come along and just buy them out. Because it, what the hell was that? I just got some kind of weirdo noise. Wonder if it's through them. I'm scrolling through their site. I should share my window. Share. Entire screen. Share. There you go. Filming geese. <laughs> That's their new site. They changed their logo, changed their name a little bit. Made it Filament Geeks. Free shipping on every order. Join our affiliate program. I had like 250 Maker Geek points. I didn't even never bother using them. I like I said, I bought a lot of it back in the day. I was one of those back in the beginning when they first started having problems like three or four years ago. I was like, I never had problems with them. And I shouldn't say that I did. Um, one time I got ABS. They were like, just keep it. We'll send you out to PLA. I had it within a couple of weeks. Um, like I said, the whole my whole big core XY unit is all Maker Geeks, Raptor PLA. The whole thing. There's no PETG or anything on it. It's all PLA. HD PLA annealed. Works beautifully. But uh, my God, the last like three orders. And actually when I ordered that, I ordered three rolls of the purple. And all three rolls, if you look at it real close, all the parts on that are different colors. What's up, dude? I'm going to have to break out and STL all those files. Hey, do, do you have a, do you have Fusion? Do you use Fusion at all? Do you design at all? <laughs> well, my thought would be is I could just send you the... Uh, I can send you the link instead of downloading STLs and emailing you STLs. You can actually in Fusion, I can send you a link to the actual files, and you can download them. Not only that, you can actually load them back into Fusion and edit them if you want. So now that you know the concept, you could you could alter all that stuff. Although I did that really dirty because I kept getting distracted and sidetracked. So there's a lot of editing and re-editing of the same thing and changing and re-overlapping and cutting and stuff and uh it was really a desert dirty design but i did it real quick national family life yeah yep then you can modify it all you want your heart's content you get the concept i did though right we're you gonna take your right now you have your uh you have to change a bunch of screws because you have your mount for that stand stop is tied in with the angle bracket with the T bracket. So you're going to actually need shorter screws for that T bracket, or you could just take and put washers in there. So the screws will work, you know what I mean? Like 3D print, uh, whatever the thickness of that um, acrylic is or aluminum, whatever it is and put a washer in there so the screw length of screws will work. Otherwise, the screw will bottom out and not tighten. It'll hit the extrusion before it tightens. And then just turn it and put it on the bottom rail. Then this thing actually mounts, instead of mounting on the side, right now it's on the side, it's going to mount on the front face of it. So it's going to come down and arc this way. Yep, 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 yep. And you'll need all kinds of screws and everything. The actual adjuster screw, which you don't see in there, because I don't have the screw in there, but it's an M, it's set up for an M3. The pivot point is an M5. What is up, Minnesota Maker? Jumbotron. Well, I think this would be a pretty easy thing for you to deal with then. You do Jumbotrons. No. 
the the main pivot hole is for an M5 because I wanted the larger diameter for it to swing on the actual little pivot point and uh, the two going into the the uh, the two actual mounts are M5. They're either always M4 or M5. All of mine are all M5, so I just automatically think M5 when I do it. Yeah, it's M5 T nuts, and the one long pivot joint is an M5. The actual end stop adjuster, because the adjuster will go in at the upper half. There's a little nut. You're going to glue a nut in, screw the, the M3 in. I have a little cap on my other adjuster, which I'll have to send you that too. I have a little cap that you glue on to the M3 nut, and then you can just screw it by hand. You don't have to get an Allen key in there. Yeah, well, you, you're going to have to figure it out because I had no, you didn't give me any dimensions. I just kind of looked at the picture and I went, okay, this looks close. <laughs> so it should actually be darn close. It should hit pretty well. And, uh, yeah, and you want the you want the upper arm longer than the extendo arm. You actually want more travel for less movement. That way you get a finer adjustment at the end stop. Does that make sense? Yeah, I did everything 2020 because the upper eight's 20 side, right? No, it doesn't even matter as long as you bring it to the outside. If it's a 40 standing up, as long as you bring it to the outside channel, it'll, it'll bolt on. Yeah, I'll just send you a PM on Twitter. Um, share screen. Yeah, and I mean it's it's really freaking dirty. So, but well, now that you got the concept, you could probably design it yourself easier, or at least the pivot arm. The pivot arm is really dirty, really dirty. <laughs> it's probably one of the dirtiest things I've done since I started working with Fusion. It kind of reminds me of what I used to do in a uh, SketchUp back when I used to use SketchUp. Oh God, what a miserable program that was. SketchUp was the worst. Yeah, and you know how to go back into history, and I'm sure all that change stuff and clean it up. I was actually already starting to try and clean it up a little and beef up the angle arm. Yeah, well, I always like to make them as clean as I can. Like even this, if I if I'm gonna, I may actually keep going with it. I'm wondering, uh, I'm getting another printer sent to me. Hopefully this weekend, this coming weekend, that I should get it. And uh, I'm waiting for him to do his video on it. And um, um, it's very similar, and I'm wondering if it has the same end stop set up. Because I will immediately put an adjustment on it. You said you had to uh, yeah, I don't care right now. What's up, one res? Yeah, um, this is a this is an M three. That's an M five. This is a big long M five. It's already, of course, my video is slow because. Come on, can't do anything because I'm doing the video. That's an M5 nut. I would use a lock nut right there if you have one. And you, you know, I beef this up a little bit right here, I'm trying to clean this all up. And you're gonna want to glue a nut into there, glue it right in, and that way you can have the screw come up out of this and into the arm. And I'll uh, send you the little cap. Here, public link. Share. How to be downloaded. 
Here you go. There's your link. Copy. Yep. It just screw points up. Yeah, like I said, you'll have to put an M3 in there, probably like get like a 10 or a 15, maybe even a 20 millimeter, and then a regular screw in there. Like I said, I'll send you the cap later. They have a little cap that you just sit on there. You can spin it with your finger then. You don't need it. You don't need it, yeah. Not only that, if that, that screws just slightly off, the, the aluminum extrusion for the carriage. It'll, it gives you more space to hit on uh, Twitter. Twitter. Twitter, Twitter. Message. Um, actually, if you go on um, Thingiverse or My Mini Factory, actually, I don't think I have it on My Mini Factory. Um, if you go on Thingiverse, you can get my adjuster that I have now and just download the cap from that. Because honestly, I think I did that cap. That's so long ago. I think the cap itself I originally did in SketchUp, which means I don't have it anymore. <laughs> And I just tweeted you uh, the link. The sound and camera redirector. The speaker small and back hard to hear. I want a camera on display. So that needs to make a mirror reflector. Not sure what you mean there, Rover, but sure. All right, let's get back to the subject. Maker Geeks and Simplify 3D. Maker Geeks, I'm, I'm going to outright say I dislike them. I dislike the company. I like the filament. Again, that thing is all Maker Geeks. It's all printers, Maker Geeks. Every printed part on it is Maker Geeks, Raptor VLA, annealed. And it's awesome. The whole head, everything. No, I'm streaming from my very old Apple Macintosh Mac Mini. Which is why the video gets all laggy. Because it's old and it can't handle video. It does everything else very well. If I work in Fusion without playing the, doing a stream, it's fine. Oh, for a tablet. I got you. Uh, I, don't really, I don't know if it's Google Plus. Google Hangouts. I knew this was all plugged up. I mean, it's totally screwed because it's been busted up so many times. But it's really screwy tonight. Anyway. Maker Geeks is a miserable company. I'm sure you all agree. Any of you guys use Maker Geeks or have used Maker Geeks? One thing I found is their Raptor filament was always decent, the HDPI, and their regular filament was always crap. The only two things I've got, I shouldn't say that, but their regular everyday PLA was garbage. I do have some crystal PLA from them. It's totally clear. And just wake it off them. And I also got their TPEE, which is also wicked awesome. When I first got that, I was amazed at how well they outprinted all the other flexibles, and it was actually more flexible than most of my use at the time. I have some more flexibles now, but 
I think it was like a 89 flexibility rating, whatever. And most of them are 92 ish. If you buy this stuff, um, it's about the same as it's a little bit more flexible than uh, the Hatchbox TPU. No, it's Maker Geese's TPE, not TPU. But the difference is, I don't know, they just print the same. A little higher temperature, I think, with the TP. I know it's a different chemical, but um, it's awesome. I mean, I, I used to get absolutely perfectly clear prints out of it. It was amazing how well it would look like PLA until you went and grabbed it, and then it went all flexy. Um, if you look at um, Fun King, his last mailbox Monday, I sent him those little army of mini fun king heads they're all mary's tp and they print beautifully i mean it prints beautifully as to simplify 3d i was never a fan everyone said it was so great and the only two things it was better at than any other slicer at the time was supports multiprocessing and now we have idea maker which does both supports are exactly the same i mean exactly it's like they photocopied the whole process and the, i mean it's exactly right down to the menu and how you edit it and everything it's exactly the same um, it's a little bit easier i find I find to simplify 3D with your whole side menu, and then you have to click on it, and half the time it's not showing. And, but that's a minor thing. I mean, it's just bitching, really. Um, but when it comes to multiprocessing, it took me a little longer to figure it out. But now that I get it, Idea Maker is much more. Um, it's much better because you're only adjusting. Like with Simplify 3D, when you want to adjust one, you start a whole new process. You have all the settings, and it rewrites the whole G code. You know, ninety percent of it you leave it alone. You're just like adjusting one setting. The idea maker, you go in and say, "I would like to adjust the setting in my layers." And you hit the layer tab, and it comes down, and you start a new layer tab, and you say what height you want it, or if you want it on another model, you can also break it off into models with idea maker. Which Simplify 3D can do too, but it's much easier in idea maker. You just click the groups and go per model um and you click on the model you want to change but uh with the layer heights you just go okay at whatever five millimeters up you know i'd like to change something and you go okay start a new layer it gives you the basic speed temperature blah 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 it's like five basic settings and then you say well i'd like to change something else besides those five you click the little pencil and you just select the settings you want to adjust that's it. Change their, you know, change their numbers. And it's all, it changes. There's not the whole slicer being rewritten. <laughs> that makes sense. You're only adjusting those particular settings. And the other thing, unlike Simplify 3D, if you do a process, and then you want for, let's say, five layers, you want a new process, but after those five layers, you want it to go back, you have to start another you have to start a third process with idea maker you don't you just tell it to stop at a certain height and it goes back to the default process bumped up because all you've adjusted is those you know two or three or one setting one setting sometimes you just want to change the infill much much more intuitive setup once you get it it, it takes a little because i've used simplify 3d it's the one thing i use simplify 3d for was multiprocessing a lot so once i got the concept of how it works i'm like oh crap this is a lot better why are we getting why are we getting flannel I don't need new flannel old people so what else? What do you guys think? 
Nobody's saying anything. What do you think, Wonder Ass? What do you think, Rover? What's in here, Michael? And Theory Dex is over there editing my whole very dirty fusion file right now. <laughs> He's like, that's cool. Edit, edit, change, fix, make that work, print. <laughs> Yeah, um, you will want to print that theory in uh, QV theory, whatever, to, however you pronounce that. Um, when you print it, you're going to want to print it, even though you got to put a support on that thing, you'll have to sand it because of the supports. Don't print it on its backside with the spindle because then it'll snap off at the layer. You want to print it flat and then build up. And that's why you'll notice I didn't. I didn't design any tolerance into it exactly meeting to that arm because you want to print it that way and then sand it to fit. Otherwise, you know, otherwise the layer lines are right at that little itty bitty little five millimeters. Although honestly, that won't matter because you'll have a five M bolt going through it. So now I think about that really doesn't matter because it's just a filler. The M five screw is actually going to be doing holding the weight. I just thought of that. So it really doesn't matter. It's not that much weight anyways. It's not like it's holding up the arm. All it's doing is pushing against the, that little itty bitty spring on the, on the end stop. And they're finding three stooges in halftime at the first Super Bowl. Neither did I. I'm not a big football follower. I must stop. I, I, I actually watched the first half of the game, and then I came on the air and watched a bit of stream. What is up, Brian? Anybody want to come in here? There you go. You guys can jump in. Somebody jump in. I'm just talking to myself. I would actually like to have a discussion. That's all right. Who cares if you're sick? I'm sick too. I think I'm getting a nose thing, nasal infection or something. I get them all the time because I've busted my nose so many times. Who cares? Just hold the camera up high. <laughs> Do the neck up thing. <laughs> I didn't even know it was Minnesota Maker in here. I didn't even know he was in here. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, that's right. What's up, Minnesota Maker? <laughs> wow. I was yakking. Da excuses. Excuses. The pimple popper bowl. Grinding cement in the basement. I was in. Yeah, that sucks. Been there, done that. Don't do it no more. That's what for the youngsters to do. Let them kill their lungs. Mine are already killed. Yeah, shop acts really don't work. Anyways, they just don't. When you're grinding the concrete, I mean, it helps. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but about the best thing is is a um, whole air, whole room air extruder. Um, can't think of the word now. You know, basically a big fan that you put in the door and blow it out the door. So it just sucks all the air right out of the room. I mean, it still takes dust, but it, it lowers the dust in the room. You have to have a clean air intake somewhere so it doesn't just pull it back in the door. <laughs> yeah. So the big controversy, Maker Geeks and Simplify 3D. I don't have a problem with Simplify 3D charging. 
under normal circumstances. My biggest problem with Simplify 3D charging is that they charged for a premium product and gave, I mean, it was a decent product. It always was. It, it still is. Even though it's not, it's far from my favorite. It's still a good slicer. I don't think it's worth $150 in this sense of comparison to what else is available. In standard um, software development and pricing and all that, it's worth 150 bucks. It's a piece of software you're paying 150 bucks for a lifetime membership, which is a lifetime, as we found out. It's actually in our licensing. It's only for a year. But, yeah, it, it's... I mean, I went back to it. I started using an idea maker a year ago. And idea maker had a problem with paths, with its shell path. And it used to do a shell and then go to a hole and do a shell and go to a hole and do a shell and then do the hole outside. And then come back to that first hole and do the second shell and then go to the next hole and do and it was it was just ridiculously long how long it took to print. It would add like twenty percent to all your prints just because of all the travel time. Um yeah, but see, you're comparing it. You're comparing the fifty dollars for a piece of software compared to what else is available in the market. And the problem is, is the market is swamped by Kira, Idea Maker, Slicer, which are all other than Slicer and even Slicer now is actually supported by a company doing something else, building the hardware. Idea Maker is by Race 3D. Kira is by Ultimaker. Slicer now, Slicer, I mean, I don't know if you guys realize, but Slicer stopped development, kind of went underneath until Prusa took it over. Now Prusa is developing it. They're all supporting it. Simplify 3D is the only one self-supporting. Now, under that same pretense, when they first came out, 34 years ago, um, with version 3 was the first time I saw it, and that was three years ago, it was version 3. Three, I think they had 2.5 and then three came up right away. Anyways, it was years before they came out with four. Everyone's like, oh, they didn't do it. They did a couple small updates, which didn't really do anything. But version four was the first major update in almost three years, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think it was about three years. And they were charging. And it, I mean, version four was no, it still was behind everybody else. They are an independent software writer for a splicer. I get it. I am not a big fan of it. And here's why. Because they don't listen to their customers. They don't fix their issues. That's the problem. If you are going to be an independent and you are going to charge that kind of money in comparison to the other pieces of software on the market that are free, you need to be on top of it Moving it along, you know, kissing butt constantly. You know, they need to be doing promotions. And not just saying, oh, it's $150 and get over it. They should be doing, you know, like, Maker's Muse swore by it. He loved it. and he, I mean, he didn't swear by it. He used the other ones. He's always going to use the other ones. Always did. But, you know, 5.3D supported him for a while. They should have given him demo licenses that he could they could have given away. Or half price or discount. They do nothing. They just were $150. And it's just, they're, they're doing no promotion other than, oh, we're great. Well, you're not anymore. Yeah. See, I can navigate Kira much faster. I find it. The, the list, I hate the new one. I don't know if you've downloaded the beta for it. It's miserable. Because there's no change in the interface. It's still the list. They just put that list in a little itty-bitty window now, so you can't see it all. I love the list. It's easy. It's fast. I hate all the windows. Every time i got to click and look and click and look and click and look, I like to be able to just scroll and go, ooh, there it is. I, I don't get why people dislike the big long list on the side. It takes up the least amount of space. You're not switching windows around. You're never losing the view of the model. Simplify 3D. You only see the model when you're looking at the model page. The minute you go into your lists and your settings, you lose the model. You don't know what's going on. 
it's not really important with most of the settings until you actually go to slice, but what's up, Sean? Um, Cure, I still think, has the original best interface with the list. Now, I can't even run Cure anymore because the way they do their graphics engine, it won't even run on this thing. Half the time it doesn't draw. It fires up. It looks good. The minute I click the change of setting, it, I get the beach ball. Just ridiculous. Slicer's okay. It's kind of... It's another one. It's got too many windows and hidden channels, and you got to go into this and that and the other thing. That's the one thing I dislike about Idea Maker is all the windows and the pop-ups and the... Why? I, Cure has a nice list. That's the best thing. I wish they changed their graphics engine so it would run on older computers. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure because that still got very close to the same graphics card as this. It's a step up, but it's only a single, literally a single step up. And it's not any more memory. It's typical 16 gig. I mean, it should. I'm not saying it's not going to. I don't know until I start playing with it. It should. It should be faster. Nothing else. It should draw on the screen faster. It should comply because I should be able to. I can actually run the, uh, the latest OS on that, too. Or this, I can't. Well, that may help. I'm not sure yet. Until I try it. But, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm hoping. I appreciate it no matter what. I mean, it can't be any worse. That's for sure. I guess it's just diet now. Uh, I think there's something seriously wrong because in the last, like, 24 hours, it's just been bugging me out. Actually, the last week, I have a feeling something is finally going to just up and get up the ghost on this thing in the next month or so. And everything's just freaking out. It's just not. But anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not against Simplify 3D charging a small 25 bucks upgrade fee, which is normal. I don't, I, you know, people are ranting. Right, right, I'm not paying another hundred fifty dollars. If they charge another hundred, they, uh, they've done some stupid things. They're not that stupid. They're not going to whack their existing user base for another $150. It's going to be like a $25 or $50 upgrade fee. $50 is going to be hard to choke down. And they, they better come up with some serious, fancy-ass something or other to make everybody want to spend that 50 bucks. Because in all honesty, as, as you were saying earlier, there, Brian, it was only really worth 50 bucks in the first place. It's only kind of worth about 50 bucks in the last couple of years. I mean, three years ago, $150. I choked it down. I wasn't happy about it. There was things I still don't like about it, and they still haven't fixed. And I've proven to them time and time again it's a problem, and they're the only ones that have that problem. And they still haven't fixed it. And they've admitted to it. They finally sent me an email and said, yeah, that's, oh, you can fix doing this. I'm like, yes, but if you do that, it screws up the rest of the model. It affects the whole model. I can't isolate the hole. <laughs> basically, I don't know if you guys know, but at Simplify 3D, if you have a round surface, and it's going to do a solid infill, or any infill for that matter, Simplify 3D can't do infill at an angle. And what I mean is, it does everything. If, if your infill is 45 or 90 or whatever, those are the only two angles it draws. It will not draw. It will not come along, come down, and then arc... And then go off at the angle. It'll come down and do the straight 90. So it always leaves gaps. If you look at anyone that uses Simplify 3D with the standard settings, and you look at their top infill or their bottom infill, and you look around a hole, you'll see those little triangles of gaps. It's always going to do it. Now, you can fix it. You can lower your extrusion width. Okay, the problem is my nozzle isn't adjusting. My nozzle is 0.4 or 0.6. It is not whatever. So basically what you, it's, all it's doing is under-extruding. You're just causing yourself under-extruding. You can also overlap more, which you can do. But then like your hole, let's say it's a 3-millimeter hole, now becomes a 2.5-millimeter hole because it squishes all of that filament into the hole. 
So it's it's not a fix. And the other thing is, is why am I fixing an issue on a piece of software that I'm paying 150 times more money for? <laughs> all the free ones, matter control, all even the, the choky ones don't have that problem. They're the only ones with that problem. So why why am I having to fix a problem on a premium piece of software that none of the free ones have an issue with? I mean, if it was some super fancy uh, setting that only S3D had and you had to tweak it a little to get it to work, that would be one thing. But we're talking the most basic primal part of a slicer. It does wrong. <laughs> And it's just bad. And people are all like, oh, it looks great. Yeah, no. Look at your top layer. Everybody's top layer. If you're using Simplify 3D and you have a round thing with the infill coming to it, you will have a little triangle missing. <laughs> it's always there. It looks like crap. Now that it's weak. If you have anything structural and you put a screw in, I can literally take almost anything done with Simplify 3D and grab it and pull the shells out with a screw. Which you can't do with Cura. You can't do it at all if you use the alternating infill that grabs it really tight. Idea Maker fills it in. Idea Maker actually does almost the same thing. But if it sees a little gap like that, it'll actually come along and fill it. it the nozzle will find that little hole and spot fill it. Which isn't as good as Cura. Cura actual will trace the outline and then go off. Now, Idea Maker will, I mean, a Simplify 3D will do it in a large scale. So if you come along and it's a big hole, say, you know, 20 millimeters, and you're coming along, you're only doing 5%, it'll come hit it and then arc a little bit and then go off. But if it's small, if you're doing like a 3 or 5 millimeter hole, and you're doing like 15% infill, it'll come hit it, and instead of arcing with it, it'll just trace off. Or the top and bottom layer. It will always on the top and bottom layer. It will always leave a little missing triangle. It just always does. It's terrible. Or it's just good. All I need now is some vodka. <laughs> vodka. Anyway. What do you guys use? Any of you guys use Simplify 3D? Post your next two designs. Dude, you gotta like slow down. These are like, too much crap. You make all the rest of us look like morons. I still don't get I mean, I watch you guys and you do more. You almost do organic shapes in fusion, and I'm just like amazed that you can do that in fusion. I'm trying to do that bubble head toilet seat thing. I mean, I had to do anything organic. I was just completely lost. Now, I could do organic and simplify 3D and mud box and mud boxes. Dude, you should try mud box. Oh, I just had to delete it because I screwed my video. I think that's what screwed up my video tonight. It's working fine now, and I deleted it. Restarted my computer, and it started working. But show them you should really look in the mud box. They just updated it this week. It's from uh, Autodesk, same as Fusion. And it's very similar to, it's kind of like halfway in between um, ZBrush and Sculptress. Sort of a mixture of the two. And it is, uh, it is, um, it's cheap. It's like 120 or 150 bucks a year, which even I would bite if it was worth it. Go off later, man. Go print that thing and let me know how it works. I said, you'll probably have to adjust it. Peter Rose. What's a Peter Rose got to do with mud boxing? So nobody else has any opinions on Maker Geeks and or Simplify 3D. To be honest, I would like to see something dramatically happen in the positive for both. I would love to see Maker Geeks get bought out. I, I, if I 
You know, if I was became a billionaire tomorrow, I'd freaking fly right over there, get in a car, go bang on their door and go, dude, here's a quarter of a million dollars. Get the hell out. <laughs> Just buy them out. Because I think Maker, Maker Geeks has an established setup where literally if I came up tomorrow and I started posting on Facebook and Twitter and, you know, Instagram and all those under new management, new ownership, you know, I bet Maker Geeks could take off again. Same with Simplify 3D. If Simplify 3D can, can really push something new, add some features, make it better, you know, surpass the, the freebies again, not charge a ridiculous amount of money, it could make it. I just don't. You know, if they're going to start charging $50 for an upgrade fee, they're, they're not going to get it. There's a lot of people that just aren't going to do it. They just ain't. I mean, when they lose, they're losing filament frenzy. I finally convinced him to go over to Idea Maker, and he's using Idea Maker, and he's tuning it, and he's pretty impressed with it. He's like, it's the same thing, and yet it's free. And he's like, oh, but this is better. Oh, but this is better. And I'm like, yeah, it is, ain't it? <laughs> Which sucks, to be honest. Um. Having a slicer not controlled by a hardware manufacturer is a good thing. I would like to see Simplify 3D succeed. I would like to see them come out with that spectacular, oh my god, I never knew I needed it, but now I know I need it thing. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to see them succeed in, in you know, the, the problem is, is even with like Cura, Cura is great, but it's definitely geared toward the Ultimate Makers. Idea Maker is great. It's definitely geared toward Ray's 3D, you know, printers. I mean, they just, in this last update, made it so it's fully compatible. I mean, before this last update, when you, you know, when I went to use it, I would have to go in, set up one of their printers, set it all up, and go in and hack their printer settings to to work for this or now they have an outright you know custom printer you go down and you can choose one of their printers and then at the bottom it says custom and you enter all the information it's only been since the last update that you can directly edit it like that and they even have a round plate now but it's still very based for raised 3d printers very much so slicer is I can't even really use it. It doesn't work on either one of these very well. Granted, a lot of it's probably set up, but it just doesn't. It takes a lot more to get it running. I never got Slicer to run on, it, on my i3 ever. It just it always came out crappy. And I'm sure it was something I was missing, some setting or something, but it just didn't default. Simplify 3D, almost any printer, as long as you're even close to your printer, pretty much always gave you a really good, if not a great looking print. Not necessarily the best print, but it was always a good print right out of the box. They were very good at, you know, including everybody in the world's printer in their, you know, base. You always had to fine tune it. But they had a base set up where you know, pretty much no matter what your print was, you could fire it up and get it running and get a decent print out of it. Which really none of the other ones do as well. Cure is close. Yeah, it's supposed to be here at 10 o'clock tomorrow, Brian. I'm assuming 10 o'clock because that's about the time they always come through here. Can I do an unboxing? <laughs> do a, a mailbag Tuesday?
Maybe I'll talk to Glenn too. See if he got that thing go up, up and running. He said he was going to do a mailbag Monday with that camera, and he didn't. I'm just all right. I don't know how he wants to deal with that. But anyway. Should be faster at least. I'm hoping I don't have to switch my hard drive out right away. Because taking out of this is easy, putting it into that one is not easy. I mean, it's not hard, it's just not easy either. A lot of the little itty bitty screws <laughs> popping that bottom panel off is a pain in the butt. And I do know because I did one of those before. I think I did my mother's. I bought it and I immediately put my RAM in it. Yeah, it's just, there's a lot more screws. <laughs> and little itty bitty, little itty bitty screws that fall off of this desk and all over the floor. <laughs> all right, there's probably some from. Uh, I just pulled apart my mother's laptop. <laughs> Here's a CD player. You want a CD? I was actually get this one. So this is the CD-ROM drive out of my mother's MacBook Pro, which is a year newer than my Mini was. And uh, it crapped out. And I went and opened it. I noticed the keyboard was bubbling and the back was bubbling. Oh, no crap. And I opened it up and it literally went poof, the minute I unscrewed the back. And a battery had exploded in there. Luckily, it's in a hard case, so it didn't ooze chemicals anywhere. But it split, and it did a lot of damage. So it was beyond repair. I mean, it bent the keyboard. It bent the, the little mouse trackpad. bent some other connectors. The motherboard was cracked. It was useless. So I pulled parts out of it. I got the little hard drive. That's the other thing I had to talk to you, Brian, about, because you probably know. I have two hard drives that are exactly the same. The original one out of this, and the one out of... My mother's, they're both 360s. I'm thinking about building a mini raid out of them. I'm not sure how to do it. Anyways, so I went to get a case for this. Because my CD round drive doesn't work. Just old and dusty. And my mother's doesn't even have one. And she wanted one just to read some of her old discs now in that end. So I was going to get a case for it. Well, the case was like 30 bucks. It's the cheapest one I could find that would work with this. It's a weird connection. I could buy a whole new one for 15 <laughs> Why would I buy the case? So I'm about ready to just chuck this thing, you know? Hey, Brian, you want a CD drive? <laughs> it's a DVD drive. Actually, uh, yeah, it's a DVD hard drive. Is it? I gotta remember now. I think it's a DVD R. It's only a single sided, though, it's not full sided. I didn't even say. It's the Super 898A. And it was made August 2010. This is the Panasonic. They all were back then. Got a whole bunch of laser warnings on it. Later, show them. Well, I'd probably kill it pretty soon, anyways. So, anyways, I'm thinking about building a raid out of that. Uh, those two little mini. They're three sixties. The original three sixty that was in this, and the original three sixty that was in my mother's laptop hard drive. They're exactly the same. Same model. Same everything. The difference is they're a year apart. I think I've actually got four of them total. I know a long time ago I pulled one out of my father's laptop, which he bought at the same. We bought the two laptops together. I bought my father an iBook and my mother a MacBook Pro. 
They both had the 360 hard drives in them because that's all you needed back then. It was a big drive back then. But I'm thinking they'd be great for quick video editing. There's a raid. Hey, Mr. Bertram. 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 I love Bertram. So, anyways, you guys have no opinions on Maker Geeks or Simplify 3D? A bunch of slugs. <laughs> You rendered your opinion on S3? I haven't. I used to use S3 the on occasion. I haven't used it in months now that I did since the last Idea Maker update. Because anything I used to do in Simplify 3D, Idea Maker does, does better, cheaper, faster, easier. I shouldn't say easier. Simplify 3D is definitely the prettiest. Um, Idea Maker is by and far now the fastest printer switching. I can go from that one to that one instantly. The minute you click, you know, select a printer and you select a new printer, it loads it instantaneously. Yeah, it's going to take you a bit because it's, it's very, um, I like to call it windowy. Which Simplify 3D is too. Uh, that's one thing I hated about Simplify 3D was all the stupid tabs. Some people love the tabs. I don't get it. Love the big Cura still. I love that big long list. It's easy. It's a list. You can't screw it up. You don't have to search. It's a list. Everything's in order. <laughs> yeah, 150 bucks is a lot of money. Um, it, it's it's it, see that's my corm in S3D. Everyone says the slice is really good. So if I 3D slices very pretty. It does not slice good. It is far from a clean slice. It it's very dirty in its final product. You know, I was saying earlier, the top layers there's always that stupid little hollow triangle around anything round. It cannot slice and in it cannot do infill properly around round objects. It's like it's one of the worst structural slicers ever. It's the weakest of all. If you slice something in Simplify 3D and you put a hole in it and you need to attach a screw to it, unless you put like 20 freaking shells in it, you can literally screw screw it and yank it right out. I can yank it right out every time. No matter how much infill you put, blah, 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 because it doesn't attach the infill properly to the shells. But you do all kinds of overlapping and adjusting and, you know, like I was saying before, yes, you can do it. The minute you do it, 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 it edits the rest of the model and screws up, let's say, that hole is a 3 millimeter hole. It now makes that hole a 2.75 or a 2.5 because now you've pushed everything in. And I shouldn't have to be adjusting it when I'm paying $150. <laughs> when every single free slicer can do it correctly. Yeah, um, Simplify 3D is probably the easiest to tune. It's pretty good at tuning. You really shouldn't have to. You, uh, honestly, everything I ever did in Simplify 3D, I can port over to Idea Maker in a few minutes. And most of the settings are identical, especially now. It's almost exactly the same. I mean, this last update is a major improvement yeah most of them are better than it idea maker is better I, i'm i'm at the point now where i can honestly say idea maker now that i've got it pretty well set up idea maker runs this thing beautifully i have yet no other slicer runs this as well as idea maker 
that big long Bowdoin tube is a nightmare, and Idea Maker handles it. I only put two millimeters of retraction on it with Idea Maker. I don't know what it's doing to it, how it's doing it, and I actually slowed the retraction down. I'm only at like 50 millimeters instead of 60 or 70. All the rest of them to get anywhere near blob free print, I used to have to print it 70 or uh, do a retraction of like six or eight millimeters at like 70 millimeters a second to get anywhere near a string free. And I mean, it's still not perfect, but you're never going to get perfect with a little millimeter. But these are pretty damn clear. There's no major issues with any of these. There's no blobbing, there's no major stringing. They are nice, clean, clear prints, and these are off of that. With a six millimeter nozzle and an 1150 millimeter Bowden tube. It's 1150. And that thing prints them very well using Idea Maker. Wings. Get here, Brian. Yeah, I think I'm going to kill it in about 10 minutes. Just kill it at 10 30 since no one seems to give a crap. The only reason I started it was just a bitch about the two elephants. Because everybody else is bitching. So I figured I'm a little bitch too. And I actually, again, I, I'd like, I'd love to see Simplify 3D come out with something extraordinary and make it worth keeping them alive. Excuse me. Oh, in there. Yeah. This is my secret project with Hawk. I'm building him a hawk. It's a secret hawk project. As you can see, it has wings. And it's going to be a hawk. But that's all you know. Actually, if you were here before, I think I actually talked about it. So you might even know what I'm doing. But it should be cool. They're little wings. And they snap. That's another thing I gotta get back on. Just finishing that up. I was hoping to have that done this weekend so I could send him all files, but then I got sidetracked with my other secret project that I'm doing with Chris Riley. I'm on that off today. I sent that off to him. And hopefully he can print it because I'm not gonna print it because I don't really care. But he will care because he has a lot of it, stuff to use with it. So I'm gonna let him print it and play. Beta tester. It should work right out of the thing from what I did. The not so secret secret project. The secretly not so secret project. Yeah. It's not a secret, but it sort of is because nobody knows about it. I mean, none of them are really secrets. I just don't. A lot of my projects, I release the files in steps. I just like, you know, here you go. You can beta test it too. Or at least I'm not releasing it, even though they're actually pretty much done. Close to done. Not quite. Almost. Oh. 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 I'm going to print them a lot bigger, too, I think. They came out really smashing. I like the whole... I like the way I tapered it. You can't really tell the camera. But they have, like, a taper. It actually looks like a real wing from the top. The bottom, it doesn't. It's just flat, which it has to be. Well, I haven't decided whether you should actually use the bottom, because you'll see the bottom more than the top. I don't know. I'll figure that out on another day. All in the future. Mm. It might be time to hang it up and go to bed. And then deal with whatever this week. I may have a new job this week. Which is a good and a bad thing. The good thing is, is I'll be working and have money. That thing is, is, I don't know if I want it. It might be a little above and beyond my old man physical capabilities these days. It is a good chunk of money. 
quite a bit more than I was making before. But it is much more physical and physically involved. I'm not really sure I want to do it. But the good news is, if I do it, that means Murph is 100% definitely on the table. And right now, it's about a 50 50 chance on whether I can afford it. Yeah, I actually don't mind work to some extent. Kind of burnt out on construction. That's my problem. I actually like doing it. I'm just burnt out on the day to day BS. Tired of dealing with it. You know what it is? Everyone around here gets to the point where. We're kind of overbuilt, even though for some of you people that live in cities and suburbs don't do it that way. But for this area, or the beach location, it's kind of overbuilt. Population has gotten too large for the infrastructure. Everyone's remodeling. God, I hate remodeling. You're taking somebody else's nightmare. But there's a lot of hackery. I mean, most of these houses are 50s and 60s. And I'm sorry, that was 50s and 60s, the 70s they got good, and then like the 80s and 90s and on. It's just it turned into such hackery where they cut every corner and all these, you know, in this area at least, all the, the mass product and production communities, you know, where some builder would come along and buy, a, you know, an old farm and put up 50 houses. They just slap up crap one after another, you know, just to make money. They were not quality. And now people are trying to remodel these things and they're falling apart. And blah. I hate dealing with other people's problems. If you like give an estimate on it, it's like, oh, this will cost you, you know, $15,000. Then you start opening up a wall and there's no wall there. <laughs> and you're like, well, it's going to cost more. And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, I didn't know your house was built like crap. <laughs> I was planning on just, you know, cutting the wall out and putting a joist up and putting a couple of rafters in. And there you go, new room. Now I have to restructure half your house to get it so they'll hold the rafters that I'm putting under it. It was blind carpet. No, it's not everywhere. It's just this area. This area boomed in the 50s and the 60s. And then in the 70s, it kind of died off and became a. Uh, very ritzy, upper scale area because of the beaches. This is why I live around the beach areas. I'm surrounded by beaches. I'm not on the beach, I'm in a swamp, but all around me is beach. Um, so, the, the, you know, the 70s, there was a lot of very moody builders. Most of the houses, 90% of the housing around here was seasonal. It was, it was three months out of the year, and that was it. There's very little year around in this area. Now almost. Probably 65, 70% of it's converted to year round. And nobody's building new. Everybody's rebuilding. They're trying to take these old little, I call them chicken coops. Trying to take the chicken coops and make them into homes, you know, build stories on them. Like, you cannot put a second floor on top of this building, it will not hold it. <laughs> I have to tear the whole thing down and start from scratch, or I have to restructure what's there before I can even think about putting a second floor on it or putting an addition on it, or I just don't get it. Like, oh, it's only 10 grand to do it. It's like, no. It's more like 60 grand to do it. That's just basic structure. But they don't get it. Which is why I don't want to do remodeling anymore. I just don't need it. It's always mold and crap and dirt. And people don't appreciate it. They always bitch because it costs too much money. It costs more money to remodel than it does to tear down and build a new one. And then you get to be, well, why isn't it square and straight and everything? 
I don't know, because your house sunk four inches into the sand it's built on. <laughs> Can't exactly make a. I don't know. You can't make chocolate out of pig shit. It look like chocolate. It ain't chocolate. <laughs> What's up, Mr. You do it. Didn't even see you sneak in there. Anyways, I didn't want to kill it. It's 1030. You guys don't seem interested at all. Getting no response out of any of you. You're all a bunch of no, I'm just kidding. I don't really care. Yeah. I liked it back when I was younger. <laughs> it was fun. And I still, I, I like the finished product. I don't mind the actual work so much. I, I'm getting tired of the mold and the dust and the dirt from old crappy buildings. But, uh, you know, I, I don't mind doing it. It's the it's the mentality of people that think you can just, you know, this old house, their house in the perfect shape again. You know, <laughs> like I could just make it pretty for 10 grand. They don't realize that this old house is like three times more expensive than anybody else. Yeah, most people don't. My old boss, that's how I met my old boss. I worked for him for 20 years. He would, uh, he'd buy investment houses. And he wasn't, you know, he always made money, but he wasn't out to make a killing. He didn't do it for a living. He did it as a hobby. Me and him, he, you know, I'd work all week. He'd work all week. And then on the weekends, we'd go in and, you know, tear out a wall, rebuild this, you know, putz around with these houses for him. That's how I actually met him. And finally, he just said, let him work for me. Now I regret that. <laughs> I don't like fencing at all. Nothing about fencing is enjoyable. They're ugly. They're useless. I get why people have them for their pets, but other than that, what is the point of a fence? They are freaking ugly. I've yet to see a fence I actually like the look of. I did a couple. I got to say, one of them actually I did that was gorgeous with all the swirlies and I cut them. Wish I had a CNC machine for that, but it'd been really nice if I had a CNC. I did it all by hand. It sucked. I'm not that great with a jigsaw anymore. Too old and blind. But anyways, most fencing's ugly. It's ugly, ugly, ugly. It's brutal work. They don't last. I mean, most fences are about five years. If you're lucky, even vinyl. It's like, oh, I don't last forever. The vinyl's going to sag and fall apart and deteriorate. The ground shifts and the frost gets to it. Blah, blah, blah. You get five years out of a fence, you're lucky. Yeah. Well, I used to do that a lot. That's the other thing. This time of year, I'm used to being laid off this time of year because I had a friend who had a lot of investment properties down in Florida. And I've known her since we were little kids. I mean, she, our parents used to hang out together. And she used to hire me. And not even really hire me, because I never really got paid. But she'd schedule all her switches. I mean, she'd rent them for a year. But she always scheduled, you know, she always started renting them in January and February. And she alternated them a week. So she used, she used to find me down there right before Christmas right after Christmas New Year's and I would stay there for six straight weeks every week I'd go to a new house and I'd just you know paint it fix the stuff for the, for the next renter and she'd clothe me house me feed me get me a truck I always, she always had, had a truck down there and I'd just go and hang out basically vacation in Florida and I mean I was working but I wasn't really working you know Half the time, I'd get up at 9 o'clock, and by noon, she'd show up with a bottle of wine, and we'd start drinking. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like I was working. So I basically 
work vacation in Florida free of charge. But that came to an end. She doesn't, she stole everything. It was great a couple of years ago, just before she sold them all. Because she actually sold most of them and only had two left. And I went down there to do those two. I'm only supposed to be there for three weeks. And we had a snowstorm. She came up here. I went down there. It snowed like every week up here, like blizzard snow. So I scheduled a plane trip back. She scheduled one back to Florida. I scheduled one back to here. And the airline saw something saying, hey, hey, would you mind waiting a week? They'd be like, sure. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> She's stuck up here. She was stuck up here for six weeks. And I was stuck down there for six extra weeks. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, I used to like it. I just done it my whole life. I've done it since I was 16 and just burnt out. I used to do it in high school. I had a guy I worked for that would pick me up at lunchtime because I scheduled all my classes during the first half of the day. So I was all done at lunchtime. He'd come pick me up at noon, my junior and senior year. I had all my credits done. I was pretty much, I was ready for college credits. I, I filled my classes my junior, my freshman and sophomore year. Maxed them out with everything I could. In junior high too. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, I took all my math courses, all my English courses. Two social studies a day and all that crap. Yes, you, you can do either. You can actually set it up to do one or the other. You can do it. But that's just in a startup key code. That you can alter that in any of them just by changing a startup key code. There is one glitch in Idea Maker which you need to fix right away. There's an automatic key code for all the raises of M101001. And then there's a closing G code for M1002. I have no idea what it is, but a lot of printers freak out on it. <laughs> and they have a weird kind of i don't even know how to say it but they have a elimination little window in their g code thing but you can go in and it's a weird setup i might have to do a video on it if you really want to i mean a lot of printers have no problems with it right um actually this printer has no issues with it the duet but the ing board freaks out when it sees that code there's all kind of weird crap so you need to delete those two commands. And it has a command line that says, do not include stock G code command lines thing here. I'll even, I'll hear it up if I can even remember how to do it. It was so long ago I did it. Cause you just do it once and it does it for all of them. Where is it? Manage templates. Edit. Advanced. I don't even remember where the hell it is. G code. It's right here. And you have to add something. And then you want to remove an occurring. And then you put in M1001. Okay. And then add remove occurrence M. 1002. I never get it with this one. And you're done. And as long as you have those, it'll remove those from the stock G code. It's something to do with their auto bed leveling or something that only is on the race 3Ds. And the thing you really want to do is I should have done it in the because uh, you can go up into the uh, the uh, cancel up into the Got that, this, uh, save, yes, up into here. And you can tell it to do it there. And it's a little weird the way you have to set up their settings, but it works and it works really well. Which one's what? M1001, M1002, just like I did. Do you just see what I did? 
Did you watch that? Did you see it? Did you watch it? Did you see it? <laughs> it's a very weird setup. There's a lot of oddities. It's a way to put it with Idea Maker. It's just, there's some strange setups. Because the other thing, I did a whole video on the. I did a whole video on the uh, um, multi layering in it because it's it's so different and even when i was doing that video i was stumbling along because i still wasn't used to the concept but now that i've used it a few times the concept is so much better than simplify 3d like i was saying in the very beginning of this whole chat when you do it in simplify 3d every time you want to change a setting you have to do a whole, whole process that process resets everything the whole slicer everything in that slicer gets reset now you're just copying and pasting it and it's keeping up most of the settings and you're going to reset that one item but you're basically starting from scratch with idea maker when you do it i don't know if it let me do it you go into this groups and layers you select an item you go over per layer you click add change your setting here your your start and stop type if you want to change your layer then you hit this little pencil and all you do is let's say you want to change your infill density that's all you're changing is that and you can make it five ten twenty percent twenty percent okay okay and that's all it changes it doesn't you're not reloading a whole new setup not only that when you use the Z start and Z end, like in Simplify 3D. Okay, in Simplify 3D, let's say you have three layers. The first layer, you know, the first process does the first 20 layers or 100 layers, whatever. 20 millimeters, does the first 20 millimeters. And then you want to switch to a new setting for the next 20. But then the last 20, you want it to go back to the original. With Idea Maker, you don't have to reset that third process you just tell the second process to stop and it will automatically revert to the primary the start process the original process so if let's say you want to you want to start building and you only want 10 percent infill but then about halfway up the model you want to go to 50 percent because there's all kinds of details in there and you know you don't want to have to put a lot of top layers on so you increase the infill a little bit but then the very top the last like 10 percent, you don't need it that much all you have to do is tell that second process to stop at said height at end at z and it will automatically default back to the original one or simplify 3d won't it'll just stop because <laughs> that first process you have to tell that first process to stop and then the second to start where this one you don't have to tell the first process to start you just tell the second one to start at set height and it'll automatically default to the next one which is awesome yeah no any of them will preheat at the same time if you set it up in the startup g-code that's right in the startup g-code you just tell it to do it I already started a couple. I did a couple. Um, I did one way, way long time ago, like more than, well, just about a year ago, I guess it was. I think I did it in March last year on the basics of it. I'm setting it up the old way. You don't even have to do that anymore. And then I just did one like a month ago, mostly on setup. Actually, I think I did two a month ago on setup under the new setup menu because now you can just edit your printer that's the other thing everyone's like oh it's so slow on switching printers check this out currently it's on my llama core watch how fast this is boom done it's already on the max micron oh wait i want to go back to my llama core watch this click done it's there it's instant even s3d doesn't do it that fast <laughs> not i have yet to find a slicer that does it that fast Slicer doesn't do it that fast. It, I get a spinning beach ball. There aren't any of them that do it that fast. 
And there are, I mean, it's not perfect. It definitely has some oddities. <laughs> I hate all the stupid pop-up windows every time you do everything. There's just too many windows. Drives me nuts. And I hate that you have to go into the basic settings every time to get to the advanced settings. Advanced users always want to go to the advanced settings. I shouldn't have to hit edit, advanced, and then get into my settings. It should just go edit and go right into the advanced settings if I want to. I don't want to have to go into the basic settings ever again. I never, ever use them. I never want to adjust just my layer height and my, what the hell are the basic settings. Edit. Your screen. Yeah, see, all it gives you is info destiny, shells, platform, and adhesion and support. Those are not the things I want to adjust the most. I mean, number one thing I usually want to adjust is temperature, speed, then my shells, then my infill density, platform adhesion, never. I almost never change my platform adhesion. And supports, I usually want to do manually anyway, so I need to go in advanced anyways. Although I didn't really have to. They're either on or off. So that's kind of okay. But yeah, the support's on it. I don't know if you guys have played with this at all. The support's on this are freaking awesome. And they actually work better. Uh, spider mount. Yeah, let's do this. You guys won't even understand what this thing is. There you go. The spider mount. Well, let's say I want to add supports. Simplify 3D, it's down here on this weird corner. I always have to like scroll down to it. I can never find it. It's it's like weird. You know, that rotating and stuff. Your manuals. It's just so much easier here. The numbers, punch them right in. Simplify 3D, they're always like in a weird spot. The other thing that I hate about Simplify 3D, let's say it's over here. I want to make it in the center. I always have to center it. And it and exits my settings. I always have to go back over to their menu and redo their settings to get everything to drop to the plate and center. It, it loses all the settings. I can cut here right in the app so I can multi-process right here if I want to cut it. I can cut pieces out and glue them together. I can slice it up into bits right here in S3D. I can reset everything from the beginning. I mean, it's just the interface is just far, far superior right there in the basic bed part. I never even use this view. What the hell is this view? View. Oh, you can view different extruders. It has the home and the left and the top and the bottom and, you know, flip around and look at it from different angles. All built right in. You can actually adjust the model and export it straight out and it just selected the model <laughs> yeah it's nothing special these things i never even use i don't even know what it does that adds another model doesn't it yeah, cancel just use add model this brings you into the slice yep i never even use those i don't know why print not file not found Oh, I see. Oh, that's for driving the printer itself, which I don't have Brace 3D and don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, how does it handle rotating it? Rather well. And the other thing I like is it has the direct buttons right here, which do an automatic 90 degrees. So you can just rotate it any way you want. If you don't like what you're doing, oops. Come on, select them all, reset. And it does it by a local or world transform, which is really nice. I mean, I almost always use world, but you can actually do it locally to the, you know, to the model's orientation. And you can do it direct settings and you can grab it and just spin it by hand if you want. It's way better. <laughs> 
I mean, it, the input right here is way better than any of the other slices. Cura is about the worst when it comes to rotating. Simplify 3D isn't terrible. Slicer's kind of fishy. Yeah, Cura doesn't. And Cura, you can actually get precise, but you got to learn how to do the outside the ring thing. Cura, if you click on it to rotate, let's say you you go to rotate and you, you grab it. If you stay inside the circle, it does it in weird increments. If you go out the side the circle, it does it in fine increments, Cura. Or at least it used to. I know they were changing that. Yeah, their, their rotation system sucks. It's really terrible. But yeah, if you want to do multi-layering with this, you just click on it and say, I want to add whatever, a group, do all kinds of things. If I want to do per layer. I can tell it to just start a different process at, say, five millimeters off the bill plate and at 10 and it will revert back to the Ableton, oh, because I got Sparrow on. No. Is that what it is, shift grab now? It used to be, I remember, because I used to use it all the time, when, back in, like, version one. It used to be you click inside the ring and outside the ring, or you, you click on it, start getting to rotate, and then if you slide your mouse outside the ring, you'd get a finer rotation. If you stayed inside the ring, it would be in 45 or 10 degree or whatever it was angles. Or, you know, it had set stops. Pretty sure. Actually, was it Care that did that? It might have been Craftware that did that. I played with Craftware for a while, too. What a piece of crap that thing is. <laughs> craftware had real potential. Like, real potential. But it was too... I couldn't stand it because the interface, and I, normally the interface doesn't, I don't care. I will put up with a crappy interface for a better product coming out of my printer. There's stuff about this with the whole slice. I want to get in here and it, oh my God, I got to get another window to go to advanced. And I got to play with all these stupid tabs. I'd rather have the big long list like here, but whatever. Save and close. Now I slice it. Yeah, I gotta get out of spiral mode. Let's do it with the base slice. It slices. It's not the fastest slicer, but it's not slow either. I mean, if that takes 10 seconds faster with Simplify 3D, I'd, I'd rather have a clean print come out of my printer than say 10 seconds using Simplify 3D. Well, let's say I export it. Yeah, 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 exports. Wait a minute. Done. This stupid window comes up again. <laughs> I want this window to go away. Preview is kind of slow, but it's way better than most of them. I hate simple. Everyone thinks Simplify 3D's three-dimensional view is good. It's terrible because it doesn't give you an accurate representation. This is a much more accurate representation of what your slicer is actually doing and what your printer head's doing. Way more accurate. And you can show retractions, and it gives you instead of again here simplify 3D gives you this big huge like blob looking thing, almost looks like you, your extruder standing there and printing a blob. It's stupid. This is way better. You can show your travel moves. It's a nice clean line. Again, it's not some big three dimensional blob like simplify 3D does. Just a way better preview for accuracy. It's not as pretty. It's way more accurate. If you hold shift and grab it, it will do single to you. So I don't know. I can't use Cure anymore because it won't run on my computer. Watch this. I'll fire it up. 
They do still have true. Yes. Oh, actually, no, but whatever. Save. Goodbye. Um, I still use Cure because nothing beats Cure for structural prints. I even still have Cure in here. Well, let's look at the four up. Wait until you see how slow. I mean, it's going to be wicked slow with the video going. <laughs> now, I've done the hack. You can hack it so it actually loads faster. See how fast it went through all the plugins and everything? I deleted all the plugins I don't use. I deleted all the machines I don't use. Actually, I don't think I have in 4.0 yet. It's still it's still going faster than normal, even with the video running. Because I think I did delete all the... Yes, everything's top layers is better than S3D. Everyone loves S3D, and I think it makes the worst bottom and top layers. They're absolutely terrible. And actually, that drew up pretty fast. But this is what Kira does to me. Look, I'm clicking. Nothing's happening. <laughs> I can't get to my settings. There we go. It finally popped down. Oh, look, the window's going to change now. Watch this. I can't scroll. And that's not the video. This is normal for Kira on this computer now. That's how jumpy it is. But if I go to do a setting, watch this. I'll watch it'll actually work. Look, I'm trying to select it. It won't even let me select it. It's like freaking out. The little Oh, look, I selected delete. Oh, look. It, oh, now it finally deleted the four. Delete. The one finally went away. Make it two. All right, I already typed it. Wow, that was actually quick. It usually doesn't draw it that fast. But I hate this stupid windowy thing now. They left a list, and they put the list in a window. This is the 4.0 beta. I always play with their betas. But yeah, I'm scrolling that window right now. You can, you can hear my scroll wheel, and it's doing nothing. And I can't move it. It's just locked up. And eventually it'll release and go. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, curious. Just And sometimes these things won't even draw. Like these windows and the numbers. And the, you know, the input windows. They, they just won't even draw with Kira anymore. And again, it's cause, partially because my computer is a freaking antique. But no other slicer has that issue. Yeah. Three, the threes were, again, I, I don't use it that much because ever since like 2.5, I've had this screen issue where it won't even draw on my screen properly. So I can't really use it. I still muddle through it if I really want, like a lot of those parts I use Cura for because I use the alternating infill and there's just nothing stronger for a structural part than Cura. With that alternating infill for all its other downfalls if if idea maker started using that alternate infill i would never ever use another slicer again they came up with that, that alternating infill layer where it alternates the i don't know if you guys know what it is but let's say you do three shells if you turn on alternating infill Every other shell layer, every other layer, the shell will go to four and then back to three and then go to four and then back to three. And it will lock your infill into the shells. And it just makes all your, like, your screw holes and stuff for parts just incredibly strong. Well, Kira is the only one that does it. And that's the only reason I still even open it. The only thing I don't use I can make it for. Anyway, it is 11 o'clock at night here, and I'm going to kill it. But you should all try Idea Maker, and you got to model through uh, Don't get me wrong. It's, the interface is far from perfect. It's much better with the last update, but it still has a lot of weird things. It's still kind of a, there's a lot of extra steps you have to take to use it, but it's by and far one of the better slicers. So once you get used to the stats, it's like anything. You get used to it, it's fine. It's got a few extra window, unnecessary windows that keep coming up. But 
Oh, yeah. there, man. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I would do it for play at first. You know, if you're set and you're doing things you need or want, keep using Cure or Slicer or even Simplify 3D. But I would get Idea Maker and I would start, well, you know, like a Saturday, sit down and go, okay, I'm going to slice a stupid tree frog and print it just to play with the slicer and play with it, you know, do different things and basically screw it up so you learn the slicer. That's what I did with Idea Maker. I just, I literally went into it and just literally tried screwing it up to see what happened with each thing. You know, took all the adjustments. Like when I first started working with this one, I, I took my extru or, uh, retraction and went from like 25 millimeters down to like 0.1 and everything in between. And just, and I used the layer thing and I went up and I built a tower. And I just started with all the different ones and I built another tower over here and had to go back and forth and, you know, adjusted it in between and played with it. But it's worth it. I mean, and now that I've got, that I've got pretty good settings, it's by and far one of the easiest to set up once you get used to it. It is wonky. I will admit it's got probably the wonkiest interface of all of them. Although Slicer is kind of wonky, too. I'm sorry. Everyone loves that. Their, their window setup is you go in and aside, and then over here, and then we're over there, and then there's another tab over here, and it's the most confusing interface of all. Okay, Slicer. Slicer is pretty much confusing, too. Slicer makes me feel like I'm using a real, a real tape drive setup computer from, like, 1960 when computers first started having the real reels. That's what I feel like I'm doing, because that's same kind of programming. Anyway, I'm out of here. It's eleven oh two. Later, guys. Yeah, hey, Wiley's here. Hey, Wiley. Bye, Wiley. We're all going to bed. <laughs> anyway, I'm off. Later, guys. Have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>